and welcome to the EEPROM 9 and meet Mr. Micro Professor. This is actually a present from this chap who is actually one of my college tutors back from college as a sort of graduation present. So, and I need to pay him another visit actually. Let's open the beast. We have no manuals for this beast, eh? Look, he even has reserved for me. How cool. And it's a very nice beast. Everything's all open, so there's not even need for a teardown. The only work I had to do with it was resolder on that speaker because it decided to detach itself. Oh yeah, I've also replaced the 7805 regulator, which was completely pointless because the new one gets just as hot as the old one. So I need a switch mode solution to replace that, so it doesn't get so blistering hot that it feels like it's going to melt. And so, I'm going to replace the battery before I go into any more detail. Now this is probably the only computer that I actually do not know how to use. I do have documentation for it, it's on the computer, and it's 300 and something pages, so I'm not going to print it by owning a laser printer. So, why do I not know how to use it? Because you basically communicate to it all in assembly language. You know, du -du 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 -du. and you basically need to know assembly language to get it to do anything, and my knowledge of assembly language, while it exists, is very limited because I've only dabbled in it for a very short several week period on course of an assignment in the first year. Now interestingly, if you look at some of the chips, you may notice some of the date codes are a little off. They don't match. We've got one from, say, 1980 here, 83 three over here, another 83, and 82, another 82. So this thing was built in the early 80s, but you may notice a lot of the plug socketed chips have date codes from the 90s. Because this thing was in education, my guess is some of the kids decided to blow it up either by accident or because that kind of stuff is funny making the magic smoke come out. And this kind of equipment was expensive back then, so you're hardly just going to chuck it in the bin. Another interesting note is these cassette ports. A good old standard story. But there's also been quite a lot, if you look over the internet, you can find quite a lot of modifications where people have bloody set these up with proper keyboards and VDUs and some quite funky stuff they've done with it, which is quite impressive, actually. It does have a user area, but I will probably not solder anything on it because I kind of like it in its original condition, and I should, at some point, actually put some real work into learning to understand it and teaching myself a bit of Z80 assembly. The thing is fully functional. Although these displays are a bit weak, but that's just ancient LEDs for you. They never were particularly bright. It's got pretty bog standard keyboard. It's a bit like a sort of calculator keyboard or similar to what you find on a till. Anyway, I just thought that'd be an interesting view for you, another one of my machines in my collection. That... These aren't... Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and... Keep on restoring those machines. And Stephen, fix your IBM 5150 keyboard. <laughs>